Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Mokonaman at YouTube with a, another tutorial test. Today we're going to be doing a new type of paint chipping scratching. This is a technique I've picked up from Mr. Kawaguchi. I attempted it with a lacquer paint and an enamel paint on top, making it dry very slowly and getting streaks and whatnot from a knife blade or a toothpick. It was okay, but drying problems and layering problems is not an ideal method. I like to paint everything in lacquer. So I've got this silver coated high grade sized piece. It's been painted with a primer, lacquer silver, two coats of gloss clear, and it has not uh, been touched and allowed to dry and chemically harden over two weeks. So it's uh, fully hardened and it's quite scratch resistant. So we've got a blade and we're not getting into any sort of bare plastic. It's on there nicely. The idea is to get a barrier so we do not have the second layer of lacquer paint soften the one below and fuse together. I'm going to apply some hairspray onto the part. This little jar has our hairspray and we're just going to generously wipe it on and all it's going to act is a barrier that will be quite easy to flake as much paint as I want off without any issue going to allow that to dry for 24 hours or so. We will go ahead with the Mr. Hobby Clear Purple Lacquer. Normal ratio of paint is 50-50. With transparency, as we're not dealing with a heavy pigment, we can go a lot less than that. This is pretty thick to boot. We're going to go for a lot finer, 70 parts thinner, 30 parts medium. Give it a good mix in the cup and we'll do a test spray to make sure nothing's spitting which is uh, quite thin I might thicken it up a bit further I only want the clear paint to sit on the surface we don't want the thinner to reactivate and actually have the lower levels fused together that's where the hairspray coating comes uh, into place. So allow as much time as possible for each uh, dust on to dry. Though because we used a lot of thinner, we're not going to get orange peel or any abnormalities. We're finished. And it's still going to give us that nice candy look. As such, looking very good. It's going to only take a few minutes to dry hard enough to do the next step. In that time, we can clean the airbrush. It has dried to the touch, though I wouldn't put in my hand, clamp it, or put too much force to create fingerprints. And our next job is just to wear off the paint a bit with the back of the hobby knife. And we're starting to see the silver paint coming through on the edges. Now you could do this from a few minutes to a few hours after airbrushing. Though once you allow 24 hours a little longer to pass, then we're getting into trouble and it's going to be dry. It's going to be dry. And it's really rippling quite nicely. And we could start adding some scratches or some chips. And you could do some really, really, really fine stuff. It is weathering beautifully. So the tip for the tiniest of scratches and the back of your blade for thicker stuff. There you go. 
I've got some light scratches, some hard scratches, the edges are all chipped up, there's little scratches everywhere, and it's not a lot of effort. It's just apply the slightest amount of force, and the paint just really wants to lift up. Once you've done all the scratching that you need to do, it's time to give it a clear coat and seal it all together. Now we've got some lacquer clear loaded up into our, our airbrush. We just did a dry coat with the colour, so it's sitting on there nicely. Now we're going to get a heavy one, so it reactivates all the paints and they seal together, allowing it not to scratch or damage whatsoever. So everything is going to penetrate, dissolve the hairspray and make it nice and protected. We're going to leave it for a day to two days to harden fully. I made a huge mistake. Number one, I should allow sufficient time for the candy coat to dry sufficiently. I've added clear coats within 10 minutes of the application of the candy coat. It's melted together and ruined the effect. It still looks like chipping but it's all muddy together and activated the layer below. When adding the clear coat, do it 24 hours later for sure and not as heavy as a coat as I've done but still enough to just lightly cement it all into place. Test number two, painted rust, painted clear, Time passed, red, masked it. Then about three shades of blue. I do really like my tone shading. Since the first layer of paint has been applied, it's been about an hour to two hours. We're going to see with a bit of excess drying, if we could still chip it. And once the mask is removed, will it lift the paint? Okay, here we go. And that has come off quite nicely no damage and here is the result same method running the back of the blade along all the edges and then scratching a bit to get wear and tear in the raised areas and the flat areas lesser I've also scratched out the panels and you can run a bit of a wash you can put a bit of pigment a little streaking all sorts of other filtering and weathering effects and it's only going to build up and build up further and this is just only a high grade foot it's really really tiny it's smaller than my thumb yet you can just see how tiny these scratches are that you can pick up with a blade and that's just not really possible with a paint brush, brush or very difficult this is just that quick to do now a second go at putting a clear coat just dust on some semi gloss this is to me a lacquer. Just one coat, one coat, one coat. Allow that to dry for up to seconds and keep applying until it builds up as we're not melting the undercoat and blending it to the, together like we did with the first experiment. Here is the finished result. Now just imagine it with streaks wash, highlights, pigments, all that sort of thing. With the added shading, lower and highlights, it does pop a lot nicer than just a two-tone of undercoat and a top coat with the scratching. I really, really enjoy this look. I've always liked the look of uh, paint chipping and wanted to get in on what Vallejo was offering with their fluids. Had a play with it and it just did not work right with other mediums but uh, just a humble hairspray a lot like our old salt weathering technique which still stands but will be used a lot less and I'm going to opt in with this for a few projects hope this was informative thank you very much for watching as always until next time stay tuned for further content and we'll catch you guys next time